So the question tells us Peter bought some sweets and gave one third of them to John. So Peter bought sweets. Alright. And then John bought some beads and gave one third of them to Peter. So we have sweets and we have beads. Peter bought some and John bought some. Since Peter gave one third of his sweets to John, we will assume Peter bought three units at first. So out of three units, he would have given one unit to John. So then he will be left with two units himself. While John also bought beads and gave one third of them to Peter. Since the number of beads and number of sweets both of them bought may not be the same. Alright, then we will let the number of beads that John bought be three parts. So he would then have given Peter one part of the beads, while himself would have kept two parts of the beads. Alright, moving on, Peter lost 32 sweets. So Peter's sweets, he lost 32 of them, and John lost 26 beads. After that, the number of sweets and beads Peter had were in the ratio of 8 to 5. So sweets and beads which Peter had were in a ratio of 8 to 5. Up to here, we may notice that we can do our cross multiplication. Alright, so from here, we can come up with the equation. 2 units multiplying by 5, we will have 10 units. Subtracting off 32 multiplying by 5, giving us 160. This will be equal to 1 part multiplying by 8, which is 8 parts. Alright, we will leave that as it is first. And we'll move on to the next line, which tells us number of sweets and beads John had were in the ratio of 3 to 2. So now we know that sweets to beads of John were in the ratio of 3 to 2. Similarly, we can apply cross multiplication again. And we'll have another equation where 1 unit multiplying by 2, that's 2 units, will be equal to 2 parts multiplying by 3, that's, that is 6 parts, sorry. 6 parts, subtracting off 26 multiplying by 3, which is 78. So now we have 10 units minus 160 is equal to 8 parts, and 2 units minus 6 parts, 2 units equals to 6 parts minus 78. So now we have two pieces of information here. We want to eliminate one of the unknowns. Since we have 2 units and 10 units here, we can easily find the lowest common multiple of 2 and 10, which is 10. So we will multiply this entire equation by 5 to have 10 units here. 6 multiplying by 5, we will have 30 parts. And 78 multiplying by 5, we will have 390. So now we know that 10 units is equal to 30 parts minus 390. From here, we can see that 10 units is equal to 8 parts plus 160. So from these two equations, all right, we can see that 8 parts plus 160, which is from here, is equal to 10 units. And 10 units is also equal to 30 parts subtracting off 390. So from here, we can find the difference between 8 parts and 30 parts. That will be 22 parts. And the difference between 160 and negative 390 is 550. So up to now, we can find 1 part. By taking 550 dividing by 22, one part will then be 25. Since we now know one part, we can easily find one unit. Alright, from here, since one part is 25, eight parts will be 25 multiplying by 8, giving us 200 plus 160 as 10 units. So 10 units then we know will be 360. So we can easily find one unit, which will be 360 dividing by 10. One unit will be 36. The question asks for how many beads did Peter buy? There seems to be a problem here because Peter didn't buy any sweets. Peter only bought sweets. Sorry, Peter only bought sweets but didn't buy any beads. So even though there's a mistake in the, in the question, uh, we can still learn that this method of cross multiplication is very effective. Uh, in solving this type of questions.